Five years ago, I put out a 158-page document. It was a thesis on a discovery I'd made. That discovery was that all of the songs, the entire discography of the artist Carly Rae Jepsen, were actually connected. Now, what I mean by connected, I'm not talking about like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not talking about, you know, Charlie Day with a bunch of red lines on a board. What I mean by that is actually really specific. And once you know about it, incredibly evident. It is obvious, it is not subtle. I will sound crazy when I'm talking about it, but this video exists to finally, definitively prove my point. Because Carly just released another album, The Loneliest Time, and every single song on it fits the pattern. I am aware I already sound insane, but please, if you like Carly Rae Jepsen's music, if you like insane things that will blow your mind, do you like insane things that blow your mind? I'm gonna do that for you. I'm finally just gonna make a video where I explain to you how to see the pattern. Because once you know it, it's right there. See, this is the part where I always sound crazy. And let me clarify something. I really like the music of Carly Rae Jepsen. I wouldn't have been able to do this if I didn't really like the music of Carly Rae Jepsen. The crazy thing is, you don't need to like Carly Rae Jepsen to get your fucking head exploded by what I'm about to tell you. You just need to have access to Google or Spotify or anything like that to be able to listen to, I don't know, any Carly Rae Jepsen song you want. That is the promise I make you. I've included uh, in the description of this video a worksheet. The worksheet you can open and then go look up any Carly Rae Jepsen song. I dare you. I dare you. I fucking dare you. Because when I put this out, you know, there was a big reaction to it. I was surprised by the scale of the reaction to it. But at the end of the day, a lot of like stands on Twitter were treating me like I was bullying Carly and they weren't engaging with what I was saying. I fucking love Carly Rae Jepsen's music. I've, I've seen her live. I'm a fan. I wouldn't say I'm an obsessive fan or Carly is my favorite band. This weird thing meant so much to me because I discovered it in Vancouver on the second season of Dirk on accident. I thought Emotion was a concept album because the same themes kept coming up on it again and again and again. And I was going to write a think piece about it. But I thought I can't write a think piece about an artist without like doing my due diligence and like actually looking at this person's total of, uh, of their, all their music, you know. So I went back to the album This Kiss and within like a track, Carly was like, I know we shouldn't be kissing, but I like you so much, but I know it won't work out. And by the end of the album, she was like, I want you so bad, I love you so much. If you just leave with me, we can be together. We can be together. I have a fantasy about it. Oh, it didn't work out? I'm heartbroken, I'll never forget you. I was like, what the fuck is going on? That led to me working backwards. So I went to Carly's first album, which is more like a sort of Michelle Branchy singer-songwriter thing. It's before she reinvented. Yeah, it's pretty blatant on that album because the lyrics are way angrier. Man, I was your friend and I loved you and you didn't love me after I fucked you and I'm so Ooh That was when I went back to the In My Bedroom, the EP, and also unreleased songs like Cup of Tea, which uh, you can find on YouTube from when Carly is like 17. Uh, yeah, it went all the way back. Here's how to analyze where a Carly Rae Jepsen song fits. The police are coming for me. They heard, they heard that I was finally making the Carly Rae Jepsen explainer video and I'm being Baker acted. I'm being taken to a mental hospital. How sweaty am I? It's not sweaty. Good. I don't see any glisten or anything. I feel do you want a towel or Yeah, something? give me a paper towel. My heart is racing. So pick any Carly Rae Jepsen song. That song will take place in one of three acts. What do I mean by acts? Why use a storytelling term like acts rather than subjects or genres or anything like that? Well, it's because when you look at the content of what the acts are, what the themes and ideas that go into the three types of songs Carly Rae Jepsen makes, when you look at them, they do appear to tell one story again and again and again. And what's crazy is that on some of the songs, the acts bleed into each other and you can literally watch the story happen on the song. I'm not fucking with you. Let's fucking do this. Act one, the act Carly became famous off of. Call Me Maybe is one of these songs, an act one song. 
Act one is about limerence. It's about a giddy rush upon meeting someone new who you aren't with yet. It's not about being with someone new or dating someone new. It's about meeting them and being so excited about the opportunity of being with them. However, on act one songs, there is usually at least one lyric, generally in the second half of the song, that makes it seem like maybe this is actually a bad idea. Maybe there's some reason that this new love won't work out for you. Call Me Maybe is a great example. If you, if you look at Call Me Maybe, the first half is about being excited to meet a new guy. You're so excited, you know, I just met you, this is crazy, the word crazy or, or themes of being emotionally out of control often come up on Act One songs. The idea that this is a one-sided attraction often comes up on Act One songs and then it reveals itself in the second half of the song. In the music video for Call Me Maybe, the guy is fucking gay. A great way to spot an act one song is that it's usually extremely upbeat, extremely excited, and yet always contains kind of a little asterisk. The one in Call Me Maybe is in the second verse. He took his time with the call. I took no time with the fall. You gave me nothing at all, but still you're in my way. Okay, so it didn't work out. It didn't happen. The song Call Me Maybe is not about meeting someone exciting and new. It's about getting overexcited about someone who ultimately wasn't interested in you. And that's going to become really important. More than occasionally on Act One songs, there's a reference to Carly being in a depressed or unhappy state before she met this guy. So she's just met someone new, she'd been feeling so bad, but this guy is gonna be the one who drags her out of it and the one who shows her the way, except maybe it's probably not gonna work out or it's wrong in some way. Think about the song, uh, This Kiss, off the album, Kiss. On that song, she is literally talking about kissing someone and how exciting it is and how it's all gonna be great, except for actually it shouldn't be happening because what's happening is morally wrong and forbidden. Occasionally on act one songs, she out loud references that this guy has a girlfriend. Act two, iconic song from this act, Run Away With Me. This is the escape fantasy. These are usually big, jubilant, explosive songs that seem like they're about having a great time with a guy until you actually look at the lyrics. All of these songs are actually proposals. They're Carly urging the guy, I can save you, I can take you, we can escape. It never actually happens. She is never talking about something that's going on and if it's going on, she contextualizes it as wrong. What? In almost all of her songs, she mentions that this guy is unavailable for some reason. Oftentimes she contextualizes the object of her affection as someone who is uh, sullen, unhappy, lonely, or sad. This is where the visual theme of lights and lighthouses comes in. You see, Carly often refers to herself as a lighthouse. She talks about lights guiding people, and this comes up on every single album. Carly believes she is a beacon who will take her lover from the sad place he's in, the stuck place he's in, and move him to freedom with her just the way he did for her because she was in a bad place. The thing is, it's always a fantasy. Very often in act two songs, Carly will reference the lover not saying something. She'll basically say some version of, if you would just say this, if you would just speak these words, we could escape together. But that doesn't work out for her. If Carly does reference time actually spent with her lover, it's usually only one night. The words spending the night together come up again and again and again. But it's not about like fucking, it's about fucking, fucking once. Okay, so a great act two song is the fuck jam, I want you in my room. I wanna do bad things to you, climbing through my window. Okay, so first of all, I should mention windows come up again and again and again and again and again on Carly Rae Jepsen's song. Streets, windows, and the moon. Once you're listening for this, you won't be able to unhear it. I warned you. But even I want you in my room is not actually about getting laid. The end of the chorus is, baby, don't you want me too? It's a proposition. It's always a fantasy Carly is having. Act one, I wanna be together. I want you so badly. I'm so excited. I feel crazy but there's something wrong. There's something in the way. Act two. Hey, if you would just admit that you love me, remember that time we kissed once? Remember that time we spent that one night together under the moon? Remember that time we were driving in your car? 
If you would just let that be your life, I could save you from the bad position you're in. Why won't you let me save you? Act three, something went really wrong. The guy's now gone. Carly has almost no breakup songs. Some of the songs sound more like breakups, but usually she has been friend zoned. Her being friend zoned, lovers downgrading to friends, or someone telling her that they are just friends shows up 150 billion times. Again, once you're looking for this, it won't be subtle. There was an intense connection. She felt passionately, but then for one reason or another, it all went wrong and this guy is gone from her life, but Carly will never forget him and she's going to feel this way forever and want it forever. Once you realize that she's been repeating the same pattern for like 17 years, that aspect gets a little bit haunting. Now, I wanna make something explicitly clear when I talk about act three, explicitly clear. I don't fucking know Carly Rae Jepsen. I don't understand why the pattern exists. So often on Carly's songs, there will be a lyric that just doesn't even really ultimately fit the song. It's just a thing that has been repeated in other songs. That puts it in the space where I'm like, is this a conscious choice? Is this just what the artist connects to most deeply? I don't know and I don't speculate. It also, it cannot be said that Carly has not evolved her style. Some act one songs can sound radically different from each other. Act two songs can sound happy or sad. Act three songs can sound triumphant. It's only when you actually look at the lyrics that you realize the pattern. You have to look at what she's saying, not how she's saying it. As an artist, Carly has come an incredibly long way. Oftentimes, Carly will be described as staying up all night. Now she's alone in bed. Beds and dreams show up again and again in her music, right alongside usually moons and windows. Again, if there were multiple other things that showed up this much on Taylor Swift's music, this isn't having a crush. This isn't about shaking it off. These are specific words and images that reappear that you're going to see for yourself. Now, there are exactly two songs that don't fit into the Jepsen pattern that I'm aware of. Worldly Matters and Store. Store is a breakup song where Carly is in charge. It's also Carly's only breakup song. The rest are about being dumped, left alone, or friend zoned. Okay, but like that wouldn't be enough, right? That's not enough. That's not enough. I've listed specific images that appear again and again and again that you'll hear for yourself from the beginning, from her first EP, which by the way has three songs on it and in order they fit the three acts. But I'm not gonna leave you there because I wouldn't do that to you. I'm now going to give you specific things to look out for called the leap motifs that appear all over. Generally, a Carly Rae Jepsen song will have at least three leap motifs in it. This is where the pattern becomes undeniable. I know I still sound crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not, you're gonna see. You're gonna, you're gonna know and then we'll be friends. Or maybe you hate me. I don't care if you like me or hate me, but you're gonna, you're gonna admit that I'm right about Carly Rae Jepsen. Number one, being in a bad or dark place before she met her lover. Oftentimes Carly will say that she was lost or alone, but that's all gonna change. Being stuck in your head or trapped by your emotions. The words too much show up again and again in Carly's discography. She's overwhelmed by her emotions and her emotions overwhelm the other person. Friends upgrading to lovers. Now this shows up a lot. Right now, we're in a space where we're not lovers, but if you just, if you just give me one shot, if you just, we could be, it could be, it could be so amazing. Lovers downgrading to friends. Act two, friends upgrade to lovers. Act three, lovers downgrade to friends. There was a brief love affair, maybe only a flirtation, maybe they actually spent a night together, but it's over and now he's just a friend. Bad or forbidden love. The idea that they should be together, but there's something in the way. Sometimes this is specifically articulated as another girl. Sometimes it's the issue that he, she's viewed as just a friend. On some songs, both of these things are combined. Being alone with someone. Now I know that seems like a very, very normal thing for a pop star to sing about. But maybe look out for it. Maybe the idea of being alone with someone, if you'd just be alone with me, if we could be alone together in my fantasy, it shows up maybe more often than you would think. This one's called Didn't Come Here to Dance. Carly does not sing about partying or dancing. If she is at a party 
or she is dancing, it is due to being heartbroken and it's to try to forget her troubles, but it doesn't work because I'm still thinking about you because I'll be thinking about you forever because I love you and I, how could you say I was just your friend? Spending the night together. Now this is a token gesture of intimacy in romantic language. This is not a special theme, except for it's always just one night. And that becomes notable once you hear it enough times. Staying up all night. The inability to sleep due to obsessive thoughts, again, being trapped or stuck with emotions, a, a crush that won't go away, big deal. Carly is often up all night because she's thinking about him. She's very rarely up all night with him. Not saying something. Carly will often say that she can't say to him how she truly feels, uh, with the implied and occasionally outright stated idea alongside it that it would alienate him. She oftentimes references saying three words, one time specifically clarified as, I love you, uh, that she regrets saying because it caused her to be downgraded from a lover to a friend. In your arms is one of the biggest leitmotifs. The words in your arms come up again and again and again, except for it's almost always somewhere Carly isn't. She wishes she was in his arms. She remembers a time she was in his arms, but she won't be again. She's never there. It's never just really happening. Saying something you regret. She said something and it fucked things up. Saying something without actually speaking. Oftentimes in act one and act two songs, Carly will project the idea that if her lover would just say something, all the things he's saying without speaking, the things he says with his eyes or the things he says with his actions, then it could happen. But he's never actually saying it. Separation by physical distance or geography. Oftentimes, Carly will reference that the guy she likes is physically unreachable, physically far away, either a plane flight or a very long car drive away. This is where streets and street lights occasionally come up, but flights also come in. Planes I'm hopping, yeah, let's LA hallucinations, which sounds like a song about how superficial LA is. The little black hole in my golden cup, so if, if LA Hallucinations is actually about not being able to be with someone and remembering a time when you thought you were going to be with them. It's not actually about the superficiality of LA. It pretends to be unless you're actually listening to it. A lot of Carly's songs seem very superficially in the chorus to be about something else, but then the verses are blatantly about the pattern. All the other boys, uh, call me maybe. All the other boys who try to chase me, if other men are mentioned, or if there's a man who's actually interested in Carly, it's someone Carly doesn't care about. Uh, oftentimes the opposition or, or other guys pursuing Carly are framed against the unavailable men as being like, fuck these boys. I want the guy with the girlfriend who's depressed all the time and I'm gonna save him. The lover in a bad dark place or a place she could save him from. It, it comes up again and again that Carly will lead this guy away from how sad he is. Or repeatedly he's described as having sad eyes or feeling bad, but if he would just fuck his friend, she could fix, she's gonna fix it. Dreaming, sleep, or beds. Also the idea of getting high, love lifting you physically upwards, but let's stick to dreaming, sleep, and beds. These show up in all three acts. To really see it, you have to compare and contrast like, how many other pop stars have this many songs in which they mention dreaming, sleep, and beds? Because I don't remember that on California Girls. I just don't. The last lead motif I'm gonna list is probably the most blatant, the most forthright one, the most easy to locate, even though now that you've seen this video, you'll be able to locate all of them very, very, very easily, but cars and driving. Either Carly is trying to drive to him over a big physical distance, usually in Act 3 songs, or in Act 2 songs, she is almost always in a car as the passenger, and he's driving, and this memory is incredibly important to her, and together they're gonna drive away from it all. Now, like, if you're familiar with Carly Rae Jepsen, if you're a fan, like a real one, you're already going, wait a minute, she, she is always in a car, like that. If you're not, Wait till you hear how many cars this girl is getting into because she's always being driven around. She's got fucking Danny Glover in the front seat. She's Miss Daisy. Ultimately, the Jepsen pattern can be broken down into seven individual themes. Usually more than one theme shows up on a song. 
temptation. She wants someone or she wants them to want her, but they don't. Obsession. Carly is stuck with feelings and emotions that she can't let go. Think of the song Roses. Think of the song Fever. Think of all the Act 3 songs, if I'm honest. Limerence. I just met you, and this is crazy. The giddy, explosive rush of connecting with someone new and wanting to lift with them, to lift above everything, to go, should I use the word higher? Secrets. For some reason, Carly either has to keep the relationship secret or it's a secret how she feels. Act one, it's a secret how she feels. Act two, the relationship was secret. Act three, it was all a secret and he either still doesn't know, what, no, that, that's not even true. It's all a secret that she still has to keep that no one knows. That has actually come up more than once. What? Escape. We gotta get out of here. You saved me from a dark place in my life. Now I'm gonna take you away from the dark place in your life and we're gonna drive somewhere. Rejection. It didn't work out because it never works out. Carly's alone again. He has downgraded her to a friend or moved on with his life. And the last one is misery and longing. The idea that you're gone, I can't handle that you're gone, I am stuck with how I feel about you, I can't believe after act one, when I felt so much for you, you're now gone forever. But it's never triumphant. There's no my heart will go on. There's no Ariana Grande like, fuck you. It's always, you've completely broken me by not wanting me and now I'm trapped here. Literally, she doesn't have a breakup song where she's okay. Dedicated, dedicated side B, the loneliest time. There are no tracks on these albums, and these are albums that I did not analyze. There are no tracks that break this. I didn't realize this until I was editing the Jepsen Pattern video right now, but the cover of Loneliest Time is her with flowers, and the cover of Dedicated is her with the fucking moon! The moon! And so I'm gonna give you one more thing. I'm gonna put the nail in the coffin on the 2,000 views this video gets. Also, can you please, if you've watched this far, can you please like my fucking videos? YouTube is dying. Elon Musk is gonna turn Twitter into Twitter video and this platform's gonna be gone. And how are you gonna get your weird Superman videos then? If you don't like the, like this, cause this, you like this, you like this. I don't care, I like this. So let's do a couple of songs from Carly's new album, The Loneliest Time, just really quick, get through it, show you what I mean. Surrender My Heart is an act one song. It's Carly being like, this is gonna be great. I'm so ready to be in love again. I've been through so many heartbreaks, but this is the time it's gonna work out. But there's this weird cynical bend to it in the classic act one way. It's gonna work out and it's so exciting. But is it? So the first lyric of the song is, when I lost someone, it hit me rough. She talks about her pain after that and apologizes for pushing someone away. So you'd think this would be a love song, right? Like, I'm, it's Surrender My Heart, I'm with this guy. But it's not. Carly says, I wanna be brave enough for everything. Carly isn't with this guy yet. He is an option. She says, I used to soldier through my hardest days. I used to switch it off, ignore the pain. Again, she's talking about being in a bad, dark place. I crave to feel it all entirely in your arms, baby. She, she wishes she was in his arms. She says, I'll believe in you every night. Again, it's a promise that she's not actually with this guy yet. And it's clearly an act one song. You met someone new and you're ready for something new, but you're worried it won't work. But let's really, let's go hard. Let's do a song with a whole bunch of them in a row. Let's do an act two song. This song is called So Nice. Now the chorus of this song is sort of chirpy and happy and it's about a guy who's so polite and so honest and she likes him so much, but let's, let's, let's zoom in. This is one of those ones, uh, this is one of those ones where the pattern becomes really blatant. How refreshing, you've crushed all the competition. That's all the other boys. There's no one who she likes but him. You can ask me if I'm busy tonight I could be free for you and me. Oh, what do you know? He's saying something without actually saying something. They're not actually together. She wishes he would ask her out, but he's not saying it. And maybe we can go for a drive. So that's cars and driving. 
no other guy can help me fly. Getting high, flying, again and again and again. I'm back, I'm back in the middle of what could be complicated, but it's different. Yeah, it's easy this time. What do you know? They should be together, but there's something in the way. It's easy, except for they're not actually dating yet. He hasn't asked her out. Weird thing to put in a love song. Also, why is it complicated? Carly, why is it always complicated? Why is this guy never asking? Why is it always complicated? Communicate. Don't make me wait. And say whatever comes to your mind. And then a voice under it, a female voice goes, I love you. So again, communicate, don't make me wait, and say whatever comes to your mind. We're saying something without actually speaking. Carly wants him to say something he isn't saying. And then she's being prescriptive about that. Say I love you. It, you know, Carly always presents her love in two ways. Uh, someone she wants who's her friend or a guy she just met. And often that's the same guy. He's my cup of tea, the sugar on my street. Now, you look at that lyric and you're like, what the fuck does that mean? Now, he's my cup of tea uh, would be a pretty innocuous lyric if Carly didn't have a song called Cup of Tea about getting dumped. The same thing with sugar on my street. Him being up a street or down a street, and specifically the word street, he, almost immediately after she says the lyric about cup of tea, she says, I hope he never leaves, and I hope he never leaves me. Cup of tea is about a guy leaving her. Maybe that's reaching, but you know, why the fuck is she saying that in a love song? But let's get into an act three song that's literally called Bad Thing Twice. I don't remember, I don't remember you. I try not to go there. I need a spotless mind. So again, Carly is stuck or trapped by her emotions. She says, you were born in a different moon. What, what the, what the fuck? They should all be credited Carly Rae Jepsen featuring moon. She says, a critical, a critical test to me. I want to do a bad thing twice. Oh, really? This love is bad or forbidden in some way? What a total shock. You were the king and I was a soldier, babe. I fought for your attention. I fought for your lonely eyes. So again, the guy is somehow more powerful than her and she wants his attention because he's sad and lonely. And then let's get, let's go hard. She says, I caught that fever. I shouldn't be here. Only got me to blame. Yeah, I shouldn't be here. Bad or forbidden love. The song Fever. I caught that fever. I'll be feeling this way forever. I went through it over the last couple of days. It is the Disney's Marvel's Avengers Infinity War of Carly Rae Jepsen albums. She is dropping full song titles as lyrics on tracks. The pattern is naked. The pattern is unsubtle. And soon, you're gonna see it for yourself. <laughs> Turn to Lex Luthor at the end there. And it is so fun to listen to Carly's music and be able to go, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh huh, mm, the moon. If you ever want to have fun in your car, dedicated, emotion, emotion side B especially. This is embarrassing. As a Carly Rae Jepsen scientist, uh, the world's only Jepsenologist, Jepsenographer, uh, the fact that I can't remember the title of her first album. No, dude, don't put that energy out there. You shouldn't be embarrassed, man. You did so good and explained the whole thing. Barely looked at Google once. They're giving you the Nobel Prize on TV. Everybody's so proud of you. They're giving you an Oscar. They don't know why. So the name of the album is Tug of War. You did great. Everybody believes you now. And of course, her first album, Tug of War, which is more singer songwriter if you're into that, you'll really like it. It's about trying to get a guy to like you who doesn't like you, even though you like him so much. He's unavailable for some reason, and now he's gone. And you're never going to forget him. Please, I beg you in the comments, go listen to a Carly song. Let's fucking go. She sings the full house theme. Do you know what the chorus of the full house theme is? When you're lost out there and you're all alone. <laughs> the full house theme. It's all her covers too. She, she covered last Christmas, uh, the George Michael song for a Christmas album. It's a song about getting dumped. And then on the next Christmas album she did, she did an original song called Mittens, um, which is about getting dumped. I love you. 
thank you for joining me here in my little yerba mate fueled explosion. I don't want to be alone with the pattern anymore. It's, it's time people started acknowledging Carly Rae Jepsen as one of the best pop artists of the last 10 years and one of the most enduring, and also as the only pop artist to exclusively feature songs with three acts, seven themes, and 13 leap motifs. Listen to them in your car, they will make you smile. Unless you've had a breakup recently or been friend zoned. And then you're gonna wanna.